Well, good morning, everybody. Um, welcome. Thanks for coming out on this chilly Saturday morning. Um, it's a beautiful day. We're happy to have you here. Um, I'm Allison Jumper, the Director of Parks, Natural Resources, and Cultural Affairs, and I'm so glad that you're here. I am joined today by several of our park staff and the design workshop team, and we're excited to talk to you about the future of Fayetteville Parks. We need something from here. Oops. Um, I also see a couple of parks board members and council members here, and I wanted to thank you for coming. We're excited to um, hear from you about the ideas for our park system as well, and um, just thanks so much for coming out. So we are in the early stages of envisioning our parks, uh, programming, and natural spaces. But we can't do that without understanding what the community's hopes and needs are. This team has been analyzing our existing parks. Um, they've been looking at our existing programming, gathering input from the community through various surveys, both online and in person, to learn what you, the community, uh, hope and value for this park system. So this information that's been gathered along with what we learned from our conversations today will really help shape the future park plan. What we have in store for today is a presentation to provide some background and context around what's happened to this point. And then there are some interactive exercises to learn more about your hopes and input for the system. I would like to take a second to introduce the staff that's here and the consulting team that's been working on the plan. From our parks team, we have Ted Jack, our park planning superintendent. Uh, Lee Farmer is back here, our recreation superintendent. We have Byron Humphrey, uh, our parks maintenance superintendent. We also have Dean Rawlings with our uh, recreation program. Zach Foster, also on the park planning team. John Scott, our urban forestry team. So we have quite a crew here. I may have missed, did I miss someone? No, I think, I think that was it. Um, and then Anna Laybourne and Allison Borkwin with Design Workshop. And so this team will lead us through the conversation today, the presentation, and the interactive exercises. Um, I encourage you all to be active participants and um, really offer your ideas and hopes and dreams because without that, um, the plan is really, I mean, the, this plan is about you all. So that's why we're here is to hear from you. A couple of quick housekeeping notes. Um, there are restrooms back behind us if you need them. We have coffee if you need something warm to drink. And with that, I'm just going to turn it over to Anna to lead us through the exercises. Thanks again so much for coming. We really value your time this morning and your input. Thanks, Allison. Thank you. Well, you can keep that round of applause going because we have some others to thank here as well. The, there was a, there's a plan committee members, and some of you are here today. If you are, raise your hand too. Yeah, I see, yep, thank you. Thanks for being here as well for this meeting, and they've been advising throughout this last year on creating this plan. So really appreciate their involvement and in inviting people out here today. Um, I'm gonna share just a little bit of background about why we're here, and then I'm gonna go through more of the things about what we've been learning, so you have a little background. But most of the time we're gonna be spending on questions that we wanna learn more from you, as well as some activities. So why are we doing a Parks and Recreation Master Plan update now? I heard from a few of you this morning that you may have participated in 2002 in, in the old plan and in shaping it, and you probably know well that a lot of things happened from that plan. Um, that that was really what guided some direction over the next 10 years and what got built, what happened. And um, we're here to do it again because that plan is mostly complete. So um, it's really, this is a chance with creating this plan to look for improvement. What can we do better? Uh, looking at outdated facilities and ide identifying some needs within the parks. So uh, it really presents that opportunity for us to learn from the community of what you're looking for. This is a chance to look holistically, really tap into the, the broader views throughout the community and understand what you'd like to see for the future and what the current needs are. Um, so this is something that will end up providing direction and clarity for the future for decision makers, for the staff and what they do, and also for the community of how they'll continue to be involved and what they're gonna end up seeing. So with that, I also like to share what it isn't because 
people usually want to know, how can I adjust what happens next year? And those are things like capital improvement plans that get decided in different ways. So this isn't going to be a short term, just what happens now. It also has this longer view. This will have actions that we need to take in it, but it is also more of the, what do we aspire to become? What do we want to um, do over time that we might need to be flexible to reach that end goal? So it's not a detailed proposal of everything that's going to happen in a park. I know some of you will tell me exactly this kind of skate feature you want, and there'll be good notes to take. But you're probably going to have to come back and influence those exact features in the f future. And for now, we want to know, um, are things in the right location? Where should they be in the future? And what types of things go where? So um, it's been a little bit of a process to get here, and you'll see some of the background of what we've been learning um, starting in January of 2021. But we're not done yet. Um, in the summer and, and spring, if, uh, we'll be developing the plan further based on what we hear today. This is really a chance to influence what goes into the plan. And then in the fall, you'll see a draft document Kind of like the old one where there's something online you can look at and see everything that was commemorated. Um, and, and then it will go before others at the city for adoption in, uh, in the winter. So um, we've got a little bit of introductory things, but in this presentation, you're going to see questions worked out throughout. So you'll need to be paying a little bit of attention. But we'll put you on point at a few moments. Uh, then we're going to do an activity at all the tables. So if you haven't already found a table to sit at, feel free to find a spot. We'll be um, doing some efforts around those tables. And at the end, we'll do a little wrap up with um, some exhibit boards as well. So finally, the thing that you've been handed out, this keypad pulling device. If anyone doesn't have one, please raise your hand. We'll bring one over to you. Everyone have it in hand? All right, so there's a few different numbers on there. So you can ignore the letters, just look for the numbers one through nine, and then there's a zero. I don't think today we have any questions that go up to 10, but if we do, you'll use that zero key. A few other instructions for this is, um, as soon as the polling opens, and you'll see it opens up here, um, the light will flash green when you press a number. That means it's working. Today, the keypads are a little chilly, I noticed, and so, press slowly, it seems to work a little better than if you try and do too rapid fire. <laughs> so um, just pause for a moment between selections. And then um, if you decide to change your mind, no problem. All you have to do is put in the numbers over again in the order that you want them. So just reselect, and it will remove what you selected before and replace it. Um, you can do that up until the moment we close the polling. So we've got to test question first to make sure everything's working OK. So um, this is the first question for testing out. What do you think of having this meeting outdoors? So you can select one response. Would you prefer to be indoors? Number two, press number two if you say your hands are cold, but your heart is warm. And of course, with these options, it's pick whatever feels best to you. It's, there's no, uh, we're not asking you to, just the one that most um, uh, flies with how you're feeling. So if, if you prefer number three, I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have done my hair today had I known that we'd be outdoors. Take that one. Four, for the sunlight and views make me feel good. Press five, for you appreciate we're doing something different. And six, this would have been great if the weather, if we had the weather of last week. I heard you had like 65 degrees some days. A little bit, uh, we were hoping for that. And if you have some other response, none of these align with you, you can press number seven. All right, so we've got 12 responses. Anyone else still need to do it? Make sure their ears are working. So press one response. Still at 12. All right, I'm going to close the polling then. All right. Mostly people's hands are cold, but their heart, hearts are warm. Feel that way too. It's good to be together with you all. And would have appreciated if it was the weather of last week. All right. I agree with that as well. So we are asking just a few questions here to get started so we just know who we have at these meetings. You probably saw we had a number of surveys going on where we were hearing from different ages. So just want to check in. Um, pick whatever response is your age group. So any questions on how to respond? You know I can do a little bit of a spot check here, too. If you all under, answer under 18, I'm not going to believe all of you. <laughs> Although some of you do look like you could pass. All right, let's see how we go here. 
All right, looks about right. I think we got the, th that group. So select where you live. Press one for Northeast Fayetteville. You're in Ward 1. You can see from this map here a little bit about what those dividing lines are if you're not sure. Is it time for ice cream? I'll take some hot chocolate. There we go. Nice. That is an optimist. That's right. Good point. Can you see okay? Oh, there you go. All right, I'll let you make your choices here. We got seven responses, so I need some more responses up here. Trying to figure out which ward you are. If you get close enough, that's okay. Don't need your exact address. Okay, we're up to 11 responses. I think we got them all. If you're not sure if your response went through, you can always select it again. Okay. Oh, good. We've got a pretty good spread overall. So great to see there. So we've got 18% from Southeast Fayetteville, nine from Northwest, 36 from Southwest. And I know we have some people who are from out of town here today, mostly the staff and such. So great to see that too. How often do you typically visit a city of Fayetteville parks and recreation facility? Select one response. So if you think about for the, throughout the whole year, on average, how often are you visiting a City of Fayetteville Park and Recreation uh, par location? So select one response there. Wait for a few more responses. All right, the questions are gonna get harder in a moment, so. All right, so we've got, you're pretty ha um, consistent park users, but we've got, uh, got some uh, different options there. Okay, would love to know if you've participated in any part of creating this plan previously. Are you a, one of the plan committee members? Um, you press one. Two, if you participated in the focus group meetings that we had earlier this year, if you've called in for the different online meetings for that. Three, if you took the community park survey that was in 2021. So we did that over a long period of time of a month and a half uh, this past summer. If you got it in the mail or you took it online. Did you take the park survey in 2018? Or we're gonna know now if you're city staff, parks board, or council member, so you have a little different role with this plan. And six, if you have not participated previously. So just curious if we're hearing from the same people as other things, or if we've got a different spread, if we're getting our word out well about participating. Okay, a few more responses here. Look at that, yeah, we've got a, a good spread here on different, different uh, ways you've either participated or haven't before, so glad to have you all. So you might notice in some upcoming questions that uh, there's gonna be an other option, that I expect there's gonna be some things that you might have a different thought than the multiple choice allows. There are comment cards that if you don't have one, Allison can hand one out to you, but please take note on those comment cards if you have an other, so we can keep that recorded of what your thought is. <laughs> Under the room, there we go. <laughs> Good. All right, so I've got a little bit of presentation about what we've learned so far, so you have some context. You can think about answering these questions a little bit informed. Um, so, number of steps to get some background information. Looking at the parks today and what they have in them through an inventory and assessing what kind of, um, what kind of features you have overall and comparing them to other locations. Um, understanding your community better, the current demographics, and how the population is changing over time. Studying recreation trends, both nationally, throughout the state, and here locally, and to understand what might be coming up or what are others experiencing. Uh, looking at, to compare different uh, park systems through, it's called benchmarking, of evaluating them um, compared to each other. I heard someone earlier mentioning, you know, some, some ways our skate community is comparable to Des Moines, Iowa. That's the type of thing we did in that, as that assessment. And lastly, um, we'll share with you a little bit, just the highlights of what we've had from community input so far. Okay, so you probably saw a map over here that is a map of your park, all of the parks that the city of Fayetteville manages. So a fairly extensive system, and there's a whole bunch of different types. There's regional parks, community parks, those are kind of your bigger ones, the smaller neighborhood parks, um, 
some that are special use, like for recreation activities that are um, very much specialized. Natural areas. There are some parks that haven't been developed yet. They're land that's being held, anticipating that. And then there's the trails, corridors, and greenways. Um, in total, there are 57 city parks and a whole variety of different recreation offerings, thr offerings throughout the system. 80 miles of trails, 27 playgrounds, seven tennis courts, and um, a number of places to go swimming uh, or, and, and access water. So those are just some highlights overall of what's offered. And we've really found that people are appreciating learning more about what is offered throughout the entire city through this effort, not just what's really close to their homes. Um, so it totals up to over 4,000 acres of parkland, natural areas, and trail corridors. So um, we do a little bit ma of math with that and find that Fayetteville provides 41.6 acres of parks, natural areas, and greenways for every 1,000 residents. So that's one way we can assess, well, if we grow in population, do we have enough for that population? So, and we can compare to other places with that number of 41.6 acres for every 1,000 residents. So with that acreage, would you guess that 78% of that acreage is within the five large regional parks? So that means, uh, um, Th those are such large properties. That makes a big percentage of your system overall. And another 7% are the natural lands and green or greenways, and 11% are the smaller developed parks. So when we talk about um, growth and more people, and there might be some locations in your parks you think about, and you say, um, wow, we've, we've really grown as a city. There's a lot more people here. Do we have enough for everyone? We look at what's coming. So. Um, your city plan 2040 identified in it that you're growing at a, you have a growth rate nearly two times as fast as the nation, three times as fast as the rest of the state, or nearly 12,000 new residents expected over the next 10 years. So this plan is also trying to anticipate what their needs are going to be for the future. And how are we going to keep up? Uh, are calling this the Parks and Recreation Master Plan because we also want to focus on those programs that are offered. You might have attended some or seen some taking place within the parks. Um, there's, this is sort of showing that uh, there are there's some indoor recreation facilities and there's also a number of outdoor recreation facilities throughout the city and many of them are programmed with activities that take place. Um, and this chart's showing that even with COVID, yeah, there's a dip in some things, but you can tell that um, there is a lot of popularity of those programs that are offered. So uh, uh, a few things about your community so that we also think about who lives here, not just our own needs, but the needs of others. Overall, Fayetteville, compared to the rest of the state and the nation, we need to be thinking about that younger population. There's a good percent, there's a hard, small, um, there's a, a larger young population than m many other cities within Fayetteville, and uh, the household size is also very small. There's not as many um, people within each household. A high population of commuters who walk, bike, live close to work, and um, the average, the lower than average of at-risk populations are those that are really, really low incomes or have a lot of health disparities than other cities. Uh, and you probably are aware of this as well, that there's uh, increasing throughout the nation, but here in particular, the older population uh, is expected to grow. That uh, it's one of the fastest growing eggs, age segments and accounts for about 11% of the population is over the age of 65. I think you also have experienced this as well, but this is something that is definitely stands out as uh, different than some other communities. Walking is the number one activity in Fay Fayetteville. Um, the, many people's favorite thing to do or the only thing they do to get outdoors. And uh, also, um, higher than other places in the state, Fayetteville residents participate in running, swimming, hiking, and fishing. So when we compared to other places, we looked at a few here, um, Fort Collins, Colorado, Bloomington, Illinois, or Indiana, sorry, Duluth, Minnesota, and Boulder, Colorado, and uh, looked at how many developed parks, so those that really have a lot of features in them, are built out today, are not really your natural lands without a lot going on in them. Um, how, many do th how many acres do they have for the population? And we compared those. So you can see here, Fayetteville 
with the, especially with those big regional parks, has a lot of park acreage. That means they have a lot of things to maintain and also a lot of places for you to go to, to and visit. Um, and one note on here in gray, just indicating that uh, Fort Collins, Boulder, and Duluth categorize some of their places different. They have, you might know Boulder is, they have a lot of outdoor spaces, but many of them are not parks. They're more of those um, natural areas that you may not be able to go out and explore or may just stay on the trails. Uh, so in comparison, overall, um, the average number of parks compared to the benchmark cities is, uh, is smaller. You don't have as many parks, you just but you have a lot of larger parks. So what does that mean for how, do, how are we as a city paying for all of that? What are is our community contributing to for taking care of the system over time and making sure we have the money to do all the many things that people want to have done in their park system? So I want you to note here, Fayetteville isn't the, the lowest of, pay, of um, dollars spent on operating per population, but it is on a little bit of the lower side compared to these other benchmark cities. So Duluth, uh, um, a little bit lower there. And they're, they're certainly struggling with their budget to take care of what they have. Um, but some other comparisons here that might be places that you aspire to having a similar uh, places to visit. So now I'm going to share a little bit of what we heard from others. What was their take on these things? So we learned from uh, um, the focus groups where we had 66 people joined these variety of different meetings and attended on talking about different topics that they'd love to see improving existing parks and increasing the maintenance within those existing ones was what many of them spoke about. Some of them had concerns about public safety in some locations and through the survey and today we'd love to know more if you have those concerns, what exactly those are, um, what you're experiencing. Uh, we've certainly heard people celebrate and express how important to them the trails were and the events that happen within your, your parks and along your greenways. They would love to see better and more use of natural assets like lakes, trails, and natural areas. They really saw opportunity for encouraging more of that activity. And um, increasing parks and access in West Fayetteville was of interest to them. Uh, and they, there were, we learned from uh, hearing from so many of them that there were great um, community partners and advocates and those that really stood up for what, the, what is offered here. And that is certainly something to celebrate and build off of and part of, I think, why some of you are here today, which we appreciate. Okay, so um, a couple of things then from hearing from a much wider audience. Um, over 1,600 people responded to a community survey in 2021, kind of building off some questions that were asked in 2018 as well with over 1,000 people we've heard from. So we've really had a great chance through both a, a statistically valid, random sample survey, that just means we mailed it to people so we could make sure we we're hearing from people throughout the whole community, as well as um, an online survey that anyone could respond to. So some of you look like when you respond to that question, you took that survey one way or the other. So we kind of compared those results of those that really knew to go online and participate and those that um, d uh, received in the mail. Uh, along with that, uh, there was outreach happening in the parks. So there were some places that we went, some events, and asked people to fill in the survey. So we're doing it, meeting people where they were at, not just online. From that survey, we heard from every part of the city. So that survey is really something we're going to rely on to know that we've heard from representatives throughout. What we learned from that survey was uh, they re people really thought when they talk we gave them a long list of uh, the purposes that city parks could play. Majority really thought that they should be th these were important places as p places for people to spend time outdoors. Uh, they continued they they really thought also uh, ninety percent of those that respond to the survey said they contribute to a beautiful community and that's something they appreciate about what's offered. Eighty nine percent said they provide places to play and that's something they appreciate. Um, and then this was something also emphasized throughout the responses to surveys, that they protect the natural environment and promote environmental sustainability was important. Um, a little bit lower on the list at 84% said they provide places for residents to maintain and improve their health. And other top purposes were to provide places and programs for youth to play. 
So those were the top ones. And some of them on the bottom that I was surprised by were um, not as much, maybe 50% said that they provide opportunities to participate in athletic or sport instructions and teams. So we took from that really a lot of interest in how these outdoor spaces are places to spend time outdoors and provide a lot of beauty for all of us to enjoy. There's a lot of things on this list. I'm just gonna hit on a few, but these were the things that people said were a problem for them of why they don't spend more time outdoors and would love to see addressed. 45% said they don't know what is available or where to go. So maybe in this meeting today, you're gonna learn a few things like that. 28% um, 28 28 said parks and facilities are not accessible to people with disabilities. That might be a challenge for them. So think about that when you're telling us where something should be improved. And um, 26 said the programs or the amenities in the parks don't interest them. So certainly thinking about what you might add to some locations. So you'll help us with that in an activity here soon too. Um, much lower on the list, at the very bottom here, 15% said that park facilities are not well maintained. So we take from that, most people think that things are in pretty good shape as, as far as condition. That's helpful for us to know. Um, and for most folks, the fees for programs and activities were not too high. Only 16% selected that, but it's helpful to know who we can help with that aspect. A few other things of when we're doing an activity in a moment, you're going to be telling us what sort of things to look for in the city to add. The t I want you to know that from the rest of the community, the top five things that were desired to add, this one came up that surprised us. Um, community gardens, 28%. We don't quite know what people were thinking for community gardens, so if you want to elaborate, you have some ideas. It might just be more ornamental, beautiful features within the parks that are vegetation, or it might be that um, you'd love to see uh, uh, more of a garden space that you can grow crops in. We don't know, so we'd love to learn more there if you have some thoughts. Um, but otherwise, you can see a lot of things on, the, on this list are focused on um, Things that are passive, that are not organized sports. People want to do things outdoors, it seems, and majority of them, that they can do at their own leisure. Um, a few other top ones, off-leash dog parks, probably no surprise with how many dogs you have in the city, and uh, playgrounds. There were also um, quite a few questions that were trying to understand how people are interacting with water. And 66% said improve the water quality in Lake Fayetteville. And four out of 10 responded that the natural swimming hole at White River was of interest to them. Um, and one in four were interested in an indoor pool. So again, these might be things as you think, it might prompt you to think about, is this important as you help participate in one of the activities? Is the top six most important focuses for the next few years that we heard from the survey? Improving parks, designing them to support environment, the environment, thinking about flooding, air quality, water quality, all those things were things that people mentioned in the survey, 79%. Preserve and connect to more natural areas. So looking at what you have throughout the city and saying, do we need to keep that? Improving or building the parks in underserved er areas. So there might be parts of the city that don't have a park that's all that accessible to them. So that might be something that as we're doing activity, you might have some ideas about where there are gaps. Acquiring additional lands to protect and preserve open space, as well as um, looking for uh, a space for future recreation needs were some of the things that people entered. So um, completing under undeveloped parks, I mentioned there's quite a few that haven't been built out yet, needing money to do that. Renovating, as well as acquiring new park properties were some of the top things of interest. So now we're going to ask you kind of a question with some trade-offs. Having taken in all that different information, um, we'd love to know your top three. So select on this list. And if we have a few no, new folks that need a keypad polling device, just raise your hand and we'll come around. Um, what do you think are the most critical items for Fateville Parks and Recreation to address? So pick your top three. And I'm going to pause for a moment because these are kind of tough options to pick between. Can you see okay? And if you want to change your mind, remember, just push, press the buttons again, and it will replace what you previously had selected. Did you get them locked in? It's a bit challenging question. It's hard to pick three. 
<laughs> see a nodding head. Yes, tough choices. <laughs> All right, I've got 18 responses, and I see more than that with keypad pulling devices. So if you're worried you just didn't go through, feel free to press again. Oh, yeah, get one over here. Okay. Okay, how are you doing here? You got 19 responses. And a reminder, if you re enter other, that you think there's a different challenge that the city of Fayetteville needs to address, you can write that on your comment card. Okay, I'm gonna s close the polling then. We've got 20 responses. Oh, it looks like you might need a moment. Pick yours out. Okay. Yeah, then got it. Okay, Let's, I'm really curious at this result. I told you there are some tough questions coming up. Okay, number one, 22% said adding park amenities. I, you know, I'm glad we had the activity that's coming up. We're gonna find out what those things are that you're wanting to have in those parks. Uh, also important to address is adding parks and natural lands. 17% selected that, adding to the system. So show us if there's some locations you have in mind. Funding and staff resources, park and facility conditions, uh, those are kind of some of the top ones. And if, you had, if you're the person that selected other, please note it on that comment card for us so we know what you're thinking there. That's helpful. Okay, well, we're starting off this meeting after all that input from folks with a little bit look ahead of what we think might go into the plan. This is really initial, so you're the first ones we're testing it out on to understand what you think of it. And we're looking to hear from you what modifications we might need, what stands out as most important. So we're gonna share what we're taking away from this that might end up in the plan. First of all, some things are really high level. We just wanna put out what's the aspiration. 10 years from now, how will we know that this plan was um, leading us in the right direction? So a few of the things that we've said, um, we're hearing from the comments people would love to see is that um, aspiring that the city of Fayetteville would offer the beauty of nature and community within our parks. It would serve a wide variety of interests and purposes as places to recreate. They'd be places to be playful and gather, and they would provide equitable and well-managed facilities and opportunities for all. So those are some overall aspirations that help guide. Now we're breaking it down into some key themes for the plan. So we wanna know what you think of these. The first one is focusing on an outdoor lifestyle. The second is quality, sustainable places, and care. Third is active and well. Fourth is gathering and placemaking. And fifth is natural systems management. So I'm gonna walk through each of these and give you a little background and then you're gonna pick some of the things that could be good goals potentially under these so they help explain them a little better, what those things mean. So the first one is outdoor lifestyle, um, a, a overall goal that our outdoor spaces are integrated in our everyday lives. They attract people near and far to connect with nature and support fitness in our natural environment. Does that sound about right? So we'd like to know which of these goals for out life, outdoor lifestyle would you support? Would you like to see these in the plan? Would this be helpful to explain what, what is available, what you'd like to see in the future for Fayetteville for outdoor lifestyle? So you're gonna select all that apply here. Pick any of these that resonate with you that you'd like to see in the plan. So you can tell we didn't ask the question, what's most important, or pick only one. We're wanting to know, are these all good things to help for the next 10 years to focus on? Which is a good amount of time to work through things. But um, if some of them just don't seem quite right for this plan, they're not the right focus, don't select it. Or if you see anything you'd like to modify, you can write that on your comment card as well. Okay, I've got 22 responses. We're growing in number. 
Anyone else need any more time? Getting it in? Okay, good. Let's see yours. Okay, interesting. Good amount of support for the first one of increasing ways for people to recreate in nature and water bodies. And number four, increasing programming opportunities that help introduce and connect people to nature-based rec recreation, or kind of the top ones. Great. All right. Well, we're going to walk through some questions uh, for, that, for the rest of these, and then we'll move on to another activity. So the next one is quality, sustainable places, and care. We care for our parks and assets to ensure they meet the needs of current and future generations. Our operations and investments prioritize sustainability, fiscal responsibility, and equity. So which of these goals for quality, sustainable places, and care do you support? And you can select all that apply here as well. If you have other ideas, if we're missing something, you're going to note that on your comment card for us. Or you can come up to the exhibit boards later <clears throat> and indicate that too. Okay. If you can't see the bottom of the screen because you're towards the back, you can either come up, sit a little closer or I'll, you'll just know the very last one is always going to be other. So if you need that one, it's always at the last uh, on the list. Okay, we got 26 responses. I'm going to close the polling. All right, a really popular one here is at 24% of you uh, of selections was identify and replace relevant and use park amenities, facilities, and infrastructure that are in poor condition. That's a priority for you. Um, I think the next two on uh, priority here, 15% for both of these, is pr prioritize improvements and maintenance of existing facilities over creating new ones, and increasing volunteerism, community contributions, and stewardship actions. Next up is active and well. Opportunities for recreation and wellness are accessible for everyone through our parks, fitness, and sports programs, and trails that benefit our health. Which of these goals for active and well do you support? And again, select all that apply. Okay, a few more responses, we're up to 19, I'll wait a minute more. Okay, I think we're there, let's see. All right, 18%, yeah, that's the top one there, is enhancing the recreation value of our trails, corridors to strengthen them as linear parks. After, after uh, getting on some of your trails yesterday, I'm not surprised by that one. They're great. Um, providing opportunities to escape the summer heat, as well as adjusting program offerings to meet the needs of all ages, abilities, and incomes, and improving sports courts. All right, those are our top ones. And it looks like we've got another there, so please make sure you make note of that. Gathering and placemaking. Our parks are designed to reflect the special attributes of this place, culture, arts, and people, and bring people together in our community. I think that was not worded quite right, but we probably got the idea. So which of these goals for gathering and placemaking do you support? You've got five options here, so a little less to read this time. OK, 
Okay, let's see if we have some art activists at this meeting. All right, close the polls here, and um, these were pretty well supported. Improving parks to address comfort and, our, and ability to gather for activities, like this one, I guess, might be inspiring you today, as well as partnering with our organizations where your top ones supported. Natural system management. Our parks and natural areas are places to connect to the natural environment. Our residents equitably experience the benefits of our shared natural resources. So which of these goals for natural system management do you support? And you can select all that apply. And this one has some technical language in it, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask those around that are with the Parks Department. We've got to work on making them a little bit more understandable for goals, but um, I'm guessing some of you know some of these terms anyways. Okay, getting close, all right. And we are, are working through our last questions here. So our next one is our last to compare all of them. But you can see here some of the goals supported were uh, improving, uh, coordinating a regional approach for water quality, as well as, uh, let's see here, these lines aren't quite matching up. So enhancing the ecological performance of areas. That kind of matches up with what we heard from the survey about needing to address some water quality. All right, so now you get to choose between these. Um, we'd love for you to put them in rank order. So whatever you select first is going to be the thing that shows up in the results here as um, what you thought was the, feel the most strongly about. So if you th thought gathering and placemaking was most important, select that first, and then select the others that follow in order. And if you mess up and need to start over again, just replace the selections. Just go through it over again. So does that make sense for rank order? It's our only rank order question of, we want you to prioritize. Which ones do you feel the most strongly about after hearing about all of them? Okay. 28 responses, I think we're getting close, but I see a few people with their clickers in hand pressing some buttons. Okay, feel most strongly about. Okay, we're good. Let's see here. Oh, you liked them all. <laughs> cool. Uh, well, we'll certainly work on making some improvements based off of the overall goals, but look at that. Um, I guess we're not too far off based on that, but um, I, I, I love seeing that the active and well, outdoor lifestyle, we seem to have hit it with, with those two. But after all that ranking, still, we've got um, many that are supported. It's great. All right, we are going to transition to a different activity now. Allison, do you want to come up and explain what we're doing next? All right, and, and feel free, take a moment to stand and warm up, move your feet around if you need to, if you're getting a little chilly, and we're gonna get into an activity where we'll ask you to join some different tables here. All right, thank you guys. Uh, so appreciate all the feedback. Um, but now we're gonna stop talking to you and get the chance for you to talk to us. And we're really excited to hear where you think some of these um, different opportunities are within the park system. So uh, we're gonna break into, I think four tables is about right. Um, let's kind of see who situates and we can add another table as needed. But we've got four tables here. I've put maps on this table, this table, this table, and this table, if you guys can kind of see. Um, we'd love for you to have a seat at those tables. We're gonna have a facilitator, so myself, Anna, or perhaps some of your City of Fayetteville Park staff. And we're gonna go through an exercise that uses some stickers to put on the map. Where should these activities go within the city, within the park system, that this plan can begin to address? So where are some of the important places for activities, programs, improvements? And um, we wanna hear from you. You'll find that there are some blank spots as well. We might not have got everything, so there's write-in options, as well as we really encourage you to draw right on the map. Um, 
So with that, everyone's kind of moving around. I'm going to let you all get situated, and then we will meet you at the tables. All right, I'm hearing some conversations starting to wrap up. You can keep doing the activity if you'd like, but I'm going to give a little closing of what's next. What else? What else to wrap up our time together today? Um, so you might know some people who weren't at this meeting that probably have some thoughts. And if you want to share with them, um, there will be the, a similar type of survey available online after this meeting next week. Um, so if you would like to, we'll hand out a little something with the, or you can take a picture of the website and, and direct people to take that survey if they weren't able to be here. Um, we've got one more thing that, before you leave that as you're thinking about those themes and goals, you can head over to these boards and put some sticky dots on to indicate which ideas you really enjoyed under those different goals and themes we talked about before. So it's a little different items. You'll see some pictures up there to respond to as you're getting ready to leave. Um, feel free to keep working on your maps if you'd like, if we haven't captured anything yet. Um, and we'll hear, see you again uh, in a little while when we get further along with this plan. You'll see your ideas taking shape in it. So um, we're looking forward to wrapping this up in the winter. So if any ideas or thoughts come to mind before that, feel free to share those out through contacting us through email through the website. Thank you all for coming out today. It's been great to hear from you.